Hello friends, my name is Chris Thurston and this is the final part of the Crate and Crowbar Dungeons and Dragons Christmas special. Yes, we really did record about eight hours of D&D &D in a single sitting. In the deep places below Greyhome, our heroes have discovered the fugitive goblin Marsh, lurking in the shadow of a great skeletal, draconic skeleton. Does this diminutive weirdo hold the key to saving the residents of Greyhome? Over the next two hours, all will become clear. Sort of. This is CNC D and D. He's sort of hunched back away from you, not sure what your intentions are. Marsh, said, is there something wrong with the skull? He says, skull? I point to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck> fucking... <laughs> oh, <laughs> the fucking skull. Yeah, the skull. Bone mother dies. It dies? Dies. <laughs> what? I mean, do you mean before? <laughs> like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> she dies. She dies. Why? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's her time. All things die, goblin knows. All things die, bone mother too in time dies. Fucking hell, Marsh is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, say that out loud? <laughs> Perhaps a bit too loud. <laughs> Ma, she's not a fool. <laughs> You're a fool. No thing. How, well, you Marsh, told me. How do we stop it from dying? Only Marsh sings the song. Sing the song, Marsh. <laughs> Marsh I'm gonna regret this. Sing. Marsh sing and dance and dope the song. The song keeps Bone Mother alive. Marsh sings and the bones listen. Marsh sings and the fangs are listening. <laughs> uh, Can we learn it? Thanks. <laughs> Everybody. I'm part way through. I mean, I've got the daubing. You got it on you? Yeah. You just give it a little face like, look. <laughs> <laughs> I flap. Look. Um, uh, if you're doing the song, how come it's dying? Marsh grows weak. Marsh no longer king. Marsh lose everything. Marsh reduced to this. He dashed us with the fact that he's not wearing trousers. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get you some trousers? <laughs> it's not as simple as trousers. <laughs> I lost my Kingdom exiled dead to them reduced alone abandoned mm. How can we help? Bring me the head of Banva Oh god <laughs> Well that took a right turn <laughs> But he's all the way back there <laughs> What does why do you need the head of Banva? How will that help? Make me feel better. No. <laughs> but, uh, and will that make the bone mother happy? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never with you. No. <laughs> uh, how, how did would, you? Sorry. Would getting your kingdom back help the bone mother? No, oh, it's not the same. I lost power, but I age too. I grow weak. I no longer sing with the voice that Bone Mother listens to. But I gave her away. And I will never be forgiven. Ah! He starts to hit himself. <laughs> oh my god. Just stop it. <laughs> uh, can you teach us the song? No. Mine. 
Song is more than singing. Song is being. Song is worship. Song is everything. Song is story. But... He starts to sort of scrabble about in the ground and kind of daub himself and get a little bit of that that juice and kind of smear a pattern on the floor. Why did you lose power? The human game. Banda! He screams. <laughs> and since, since then, your people left you? They think I gave away Bone Mother. In truth, I think she would have died anyway. But he sapped her, took her power, pulled it up. He used it not like goblin, not in pieces, not to dream small things and keep the bad things away, but to do, do whatever he did to fruit. <laughs> Mostly turned apples into oranges. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. <laughs> they were delicious, but... <laughs> Ridiculous! <laughs> Yeah, he drinks mother's milkshake. Not good. If if Bunva stopped now, would it save the skull thing? No. Fuck. <laughs> it seems unsolvable. The process is simply how it must be. Unless, unless, unless Marsh becomes more powerful. You have it. The, the thing he makes. The, the egg thing. Apple oranges? <laughs> no! Man, I don't want an apple orange! <laughs> sorry, the sorry. Egg, so sorry. Maybe. The egg? I've got, yeah, I've got the egg. Oh, yeah. it's, That's made um, up crystallised. I don't but, know. But, I mean, I'm assuming it's I guess filled with the, it's worth with a the shot. dragon head yeah. blood. Okay, I offer him the egg thing. Egg crystal he, fuel. He's approached you now, gingerly. He sort of takes it from you and snatches it and runs back into the darkness with it and goes, This empty thing! And he starts beating it on the ground. God damn it, Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> Give it back then. No! <laughs> what he if we stuffed it into his loincloth. What if we brought you a full one? <laughs> Would that help? No, more. Need everything left. Oh. But hang on. So you said that death was natural and maybe it would have died anyway so i mean uh, are we just appeasing you for the sake of it and it'll just do its own thing regardless like what uh, in the day when marsh was young marsh had relationship with bone mother oh my god (laughs) Too much. <laughs> Too much. Uh-huh. Not in that way. Mostly. <laughs> God. I knew how to share her power. I shared it with other. They respect me. I could do it again with more of her power. Once she taught and I learned, I could teach her. To sing. Become one, this Bone Mother. Hmm. Who is she in this context? Bone Mother! <laughs> <laughs> I jump. <laughs> bone Mother become one with Bone Mother? I think Marsh wants to become one with Bone Mother. Maybe, so to speak. <laughs> If we if we got you all of the weird juice shit from <laughs> Bunver's place and brought it here, would that fix it? <laughs> You've been to Bunver place. Yeah, where well, I was hanging out there earlier, disguising myself as his friend, <laughs> breaking his window. <laughs> Did you see a goblin? No. Would Did we? <laughs> I don't think so. I, I was checking for I goblins feel like constantly. You <laughs> Would it have been in armour? No. Goblin like Marsh! Mm. Mm, No. No goblin like Marsh in Bunver's place. I hope he did not get stuck. A shame. Shame. Who did? I did find a goblin. That egg thing? (laughs) Didn't mention that! (laughs) Uh, not not in Bunvers place, but long before uh, elsewhere, oh, yes. we did find a goblin in oh, that, that guy. egg. Uh, 
uh this egg thing uh yeah we we borrowed it you from, found this from a goblin we, we <laughs> you're it. mentioning this <laughs> <laughs> he reaches back into his loincloth and draws the egg out and goes definitely mine <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we, we were just looking for its rightful owner so you know <laughs> mm, mm, that's how we got caught up in this probably he made it then he's okay no, uh, not really. Not super, <laughs> not super okay. <laughs> He'll probably be fine. Who, who was he to you? My last friend. Oh, that's a bad one. I sent him up the siphon to see if it was safe. Up, up above us is access. Bunver place. I want to get in. Steal things, obviously. <laughs> Steal device. To be honest, we have a lot in common in that sense. <laughs> mm, ah, it's a, it's a good, it's a good fucking plan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got to say, it didn't prove to be safe for your friend there. Mm-mm. What happened? Ah, uh, <laughs> anyone actually remember? Hey, he was we- certainly dead. He oh. got killed by an orc and two humans. But, like, outside of Greyholm, right? Yeah. In a weird summer oasis. <sighs> Sorry, man. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that means that it is safe. The passage upwards is safe. No. <laughs> I mean, the guy died. You, you might Killed be... by an orc! <laughs> that could have happened outside! <laughs> Fair. Alright. I mean, does that help you? It does! It cool. does help, Marsh! How? You don't need to know that! <laughs> oh, Alright, then. We're interested, though. Make a persuasion check. Or a charm check, or something. <laughs> I have deception as a... I don't know, I suppose it's more persuasion, isn't it? Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's an actual 20. Wow. I don't oh. know why, but I like you. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> it's the most charming bird. Here's the thing. I can only do so much with what is left. These dregs of bone mother. These drippings. I need not just the crystal. This thing he has made from the holy blood. I need the device. Oh, the recombinator. Take me to him. Okay. And I will <laughs> save your people. <laughs> Shall we... Uh, hang on. Excuse me for a moment, Goblin Marsh. Uh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> hey, Pip, do you still have that chest you can put people in? <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, so I don't think that Bunva was all that. Uh, hmm. So I think that we could just install... The goblin instead of him, as long as he promises to to keep people alive. Yeah, goblin yeah. Marsh, could you just move back a bit, just out of hearing? Okay, that. <laughs> that's it. Just back up, back. That's good. That's mm. good. Uh, yeah, I see. I see what you mean. Like, I I use press digitation to create elevating music around, <laughs> around Marsh, so that he can't hear us so well. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. The only he starts to dance. <laughs> it's grotesque. <laughs> The thing I would suggest is how invested are we really in anyone who's left in Greyhound? <laughs> well, we Look, could just I, go I forewent a long rest to save oh, those okay. people, so I'm yeah. deeply right. invested now. Yeah, I think those people are what matter, and you know, if Bunver doesn't come out of this so good, then maybe that's better for the people. Yeah, Bunver is obviously, I mean, he's ambitious, but he's, he's uh, unwilling to... Um, stop his experiments when they started to hurt people. And mm. also, uh, he encountered what must be one of the most powerful ancient forces in the universe, and he used it to make a check. <laughs> Does but he also deserve to live? <laughs> but also the apple orange, it's very good. <laughs> yes, the apple orange is perhaps worth saving. <laughs> but at what cost? <laughs> well, so if we fix this whole situation, then the apple... Uh, <laughs> Aplorange. I can't remember how you say it Is it Aplonge? Aplonge. 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 I also have had an Aplonge. <laughs> <laughs> I happen to know this. <laughs> it's more convenient than I know this. <laughs> <laughs> He's dancing. Um, so I think uh, if those uh, turn stable, uh, you could just try building an orchard. 
<laughs> there we go. Problem, all problems solved. All right, so we bring Marsh to Bunda's lab. Hmm. Why the uh, problem? Uh, is it probably better that we let the ancient magic dragon from a different plane of existence die as it is supposed to? But I think all of the people who have been uh, Bunvered <laughs> disintegrate. That's the thing. Although, see, this is what I was asking about, because would it not be better to just let it all crumble into dust? They will die! <laughs> Am I the only one who wants to save all the people? <laughs> So what's the greater good? Like, if this thing continues to live on, and it, it's just any old goblin can wander along and start rubbing up against it. Well, what I'm thinking is, <laughs> is there some way to, uh, once we fix the disintegration problem, for Bunva to sort of, I don't know, undo the magic, or, like, make it's, it so... I think, yeah, I'm trying to ask him. What, you know, alternative course of action. Ignore what's happened in Greyhome. You know, <laughs> sure, fine. <laughs> Power could be ours. Huh. I see the obviously evil point you're making there. <laughs> I, I feel like evil, painting yourself in this just... stuff has maybe tainted you a little bit. On <laughs> so, the... Tonight on the Moral Maze. <laughs> Should we go swimming in Dragon Brain? <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> How are you guys doing? <laughs> he's, he's digging this tune. <laughs> Marsh? Yeah. Marsh? Is dragon brain juice poisonous? Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not to a goblin, though! <laughs> he's dancing. I was doing that in real life, but that's cool. what I was So hang on. So are we settling on taking him up to see Buzzard? Yeah, he's got some kind of like... Happens. You'll see what happens. It sounds yeah. like he's got some kind of secret way up. Yeah. Okay. So we can use that... Let's get I've been joined you. I mean, so looking at you, <laughs> off at you, like, ah! I increase the volume of the prestidigitation elevator music. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Can we go, have a go on the siphon? You want to go up the siphon? I can't hear you. Oh. <laughs> I turn the music. I stop the music. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I start the music, but quieter, so you can oh. hear us, but still enjoy it. Oh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go in the siphon? Yeah. Cool. You want to go at the siphon? That's better than getting eaten by an etta cap. What's that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> is that the thing in the web? Oh, yeah. What's an etta cap? Um, an etta cap is a... Uh, you, I'm trying to think. Do a quick nature check. That's a... Uh, 19 plus... Yeah, that's fine. Yep. So <laughs> this makes sense to you now. So an etacap is a kind of humanoid spider-like monster thing that mm, you might nice. find in the hidden underground place of the world. Suddenly like a few things click into place in your brain, logically, yeah. about what might what might do. What might do. <laughs> well, I'm glad we didn't follow those tracks. Thing what might do. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. back to lovely, lovely open sky for us. It's got to be a bit narrow. Can we, oh. can we send Marsh first? Yeah! <laughs> Thanks, Marsh. Uh, so, he gestures up, and you can see that at a point in the ceiling, there's like, uh, you know, like, light through a membrane? There's mm-hmm. a point in the bone of this creature where light appears to be pooling, like, not breaking through, but, like, close to the surface of the thing. Of the, the underside of the skull, if that makes sense. The, the roof of the jaw. Marsh points at this and says, That's where she is, bone mother. Climb! And then through and then up through the siphon. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you first, but... So, uh... Marsh uh, springs off towards a a large jutting tooth and begins to scale it uh, hand over hand, pulling himself, occasionally having to, like, hug it and then kind of grind up as he moves. And then he stands on the pinnacle and jumps and grabs a jagged fragment of fang from the jaw above Mm -hmm. and starts to hoist himself up onto that, scaling towards the ceiling. Cool. It's good for you... You can fly. <laughs> I, yeah, a, be a tall, a very heavy gnome, <laughs> might struggle to make this, guys. <laughs> I can give it a shot. We've got a rope. Yeah, we That can... would be helpful. Yeah. 
We could, um, is there a place on the skull that we could affix the rope so that it hangs down? So it's actually quite hard for you to see. Mm. Um, but actually, as Marsh climbs higher, you can see fragments of the rock kind of illuminated by his body, basically, and the amount of this stuff he's daubed mm. in. Mm. Um, you can see that as he climbs up the, the fang, he kind of like swings around as he gets to the top and like enters what appears to be like a kind of, uh, a, a cubby hole where the top of the the tooth line meets the rock of the cave proper, if that makes sense. Mm. So he goes around rather than up. Ver- he obviously can't climb vertically. So he goes up and around and sort of vanishes into a crevice. Uh, do we know where this thing comes out? Did he tell us that? Um, he didn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if it's like into Bunver's office or something, this might be a mistake to send him first because he might just get killed. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, but actually, as he pointed out, his friend made it through the, this thing and didn't die immediately. He died later. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. We can probably follow. So maybe that us flyers should go next, and then we can leave a rope for. I'm That'd going to dip my hand towel in the brain juice oh, and God. put it in my backpack just in case. <laughs> Noted. The, okay. <laughs> you dip the towel you stole, stole from the idle thumb. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, so what are you going to do? Uh, I will flap up after a marsh. Okay. And uh, if I can uh, see a place to, you know, uh, drop my rope and attach it to something. So, I'll... yeah, you, you fly up to the, the roof of the cavern, kind of following the path marsh took. And there is indeed a tight passageway up here, probably only a few, few feet across, but you're able to tuck your wings in um, and and squeeze through. And you can see in here, it's dark at this point. You used to have a torch, don't you? Yes. Uh, the sort of uh, rocks and the tops of the fangs, and then a narrow passageway, probably just, just big enough to crawl through, that will take you into a gap in the skull. Cool. I continue. Okay. There's, <laughs> there's, there are places here, like jagged rocks and bits of fang for you to tie a rope. If you, yeah, okay. I guess I guess once he's in the narrow bit, you'll be all right to climb, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll attach a rope here. I actually have pitons. Okay, I perfect. I won't make you do a check for this, because, yeah, it's fine. You can tie a rope to something. Cool. I will uh, grasp the rope and climb I must up. warn you, it is a hempen rope. <laughs> so Okay, how much do you weigh? I mean, it's not actually specified, because it's a very polite <laughs> stat sheet. 400 um, kilos. <laughs> it's not on your next thing. Isn't it you weigh, like, really? 100 pounds or something it might not be on a statue because there's only a statue if you chose to include it but it'll be on the uh the fact sheet the for, and i tell you what it's not going to matter too much just mm. um give me a acrobatics check i rolled 11 total um okay so you get halfway up this rope Uh-oh. and you start to sway kind of dangerously and you can f- you can feel like the that hempen cord kind of giving uh, underneath your hands guys bit of a problem can someone quickly throw another rope this one is in trouble uh, 80 Eric. to 120 pounds okay that so, you? that's a no okay yeah. it's it's heavy for a three foot tall thing mm. yeah um Eretrix, what were you up to um well so I could probably, f- if you don't move, I can flap up and try and put another rope to to run parallel and take the other, Sounds take good. more strain. Okay. Sounds uh, good. Are you going to try and do this quickly? Cause, I mean, yes, uh, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. fairly abruptly. <laughs> yeah. Give me an acrobatics check from Aerotrix then. Okay. Uh, I have advantage on that. Two. <laughs> Oh, thank God. At six. Uh, plus. plus five. Okay. So, so 11. 11. So you able, you're able to uh, uh, sort of flap and, and make your way up to the ceiling very quickly, mm-hmm. uh, tie a rope off close to where the other one is tied and drop it down. Uh, the rope comes basically shooting down straight for you. Right. Um Lazam, so I'm going to ask you to make a quick deck saving throw. <laughs> uh, Ace it. 22. Fine. You kind of s- deliberately swing out of the way and then swing back and grab the rope that's just been offered. 
and um, rather than just being hit in the face by a rope. <laughs> and you now, with basically a rope in each hand, uh, in a much more stable position, to kind of like start hoisting yourself the rest of the way up and into this tiny crevice, which is a lot more comfortable for you than it is for these two. That's better. I'm going to need a wisdom saving throw from both Aracocra. Mm-hmm. Mm. 16. I got three plus five, which is eight. 18. Okay, you are. Um, oh, wait, sorry. It's um, you got an advantage. Proficiency, so you, got, uh, you just had your proficiency bonus to it, though. Oh, do I not roll that again? Uh, no, it's not, it's not advantage. It's just proficiency. Okay. Oh, no, unless you get advantage, unless you get advantage on wisdom saving for those as a warlock. It's just, I thought, because this is a proficiency that that meant I got That means you had your proficiency bonus, which is the thing at the top. Yeah, I think that's factored into the plus five that it says there. Yeah, I'll take your first roll of a three. <laughs> so, uh, eight. Uh, Eretrix, you are doing um, okay. I don't think I should have had advantage on a couple of things I did. That's previously. fine. This is a learning game, <laughs> mostly for jokes. Cool. Um, however, Ralph, the closed space is not making you happy at all. <laughs> you, be- you become frightened, which means you have disadvantage on all checks of all kinds wow. until <laughs> you don't feel frightened anymore. Okay. Um, so you climb, I presume, crawl, Ralph maybe reluctantly, Marsh has scampered on ahead. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. You climb the rock and then a slab of ancient bone and you emerge <clears throat> into kind of what remains of this creature's brain pan. It's still a big chamber, 15, 20 feet around. However, where the brain should be is what looks like a, just like a, a, a nothing space, a kind of hole in time, a kind of planar singularity that is leaking in small quantities, this white glowing liquid. Yikes. Mm. Above it in the ceiling is a, the, a, a clearly artificial hole, as if something's been drilled, punched through from above, and streaks of this, uh, of this fluid, as well as the stuff that's dripping down, is being pulled upwards, running in, in like, like raindrops in reverse down a window, up the inside of the brain pan and up into this siphon hmm. which is a hole again about three feet across this might be the thing we need to stop it eventually you think <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's an odd thing to i mean is this the creature's brain is it just like in lots of different dimensions is this the thing that killed the dragon like this appearing in its head like this. I mean, <laughs> uh, what is this stuff? It's probably not even brain juice, perhaps some other, something from another place. It's strange. <laughs> not I have just no, common brain juice uh, like you'd normally find. As a, a detail, head. I have no answers to any of these <laughs> questions. But this is these are the thoughts that flit across my mind. <laughs> That's your folksy deep gnome wisdom. <laughs> yeah. raise a lot of questions. Uh, yeah. As a deep gnome, I wouldn't um, know. <laughs> I'm merely a deep gnome for deep places. <laughs> Marsh turns back to you and says, Upwards! All right. <laughs> <laughs> so sort of carefully inching around the edge um you feel like you can uh there's actually you feel almost the pull of this thing this device this magic device whatever it is so much so that when you put your hands to the wall you almost begin to slip upwards mm. like gra- something wrong something's wrong with gravity mm. um so much so Lazan, even you, when you put your hands to the wall, almost like you have to kind of like root yourself, be as the heaviest deep gnome you can be to remain <laughs> in the floor. Um, but it is a, a tight fit. Onwards. Yeah, and upwards, I suppose. Are we, um, so is this flowing into this um, crank, presumably, that's yeah. sucking in the... sucking up into the siphon. Is there a way to avoid being coated in this stuff as we climb up? It might be quite Why difficult. would you want to? Probably, <laughs> well, like, <laughs> not obviously, because mm. it's kind of, that's how it works, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Joke's on you, Gravity. I was going this way anyway. <laughs> I'm going to throw a ball bearing at the brain. Just <laughs> oh, my <happens>. God. <laughs> I just want to know. Um, you so you throw a ball bearing directly at this singular point. This kills us all. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I need to, I, the DM, who knows the logic of the situation, need to think about this one. <laughs> yeah, gravity's going in a few different directions, I suppose, isn't it? Uh, that's a good point, actually. So the, the, the ball bearing kind of, um, speeds up the faster, the closer it gets to this point and then starts to like spin around it. Okay. Like, like whipping faster and faster and faster and faster and faster. And, faster. and then its orbit around the central point starts to extend uh. and get wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. And, wider and, wider. <laughs> and then it eventually, after a minute, Marge goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and um it's a good question don't play Marge. ball with bone mother and the ball bearing hits a side of the skull and ricochets like a bullet I'm going to need a dex saving throw from everybody <laughs> oh my god <laughs> mine's a nat 20 oh wow plus 2 oh uh, disadvantage though oh because you're frightened oh yeah you're right 2 <laughs> plus 2 <laughs> I rolled a 16. Okay. 30. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ralph. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> oh, Ralph. Um, <laughs> this thing just sort of hits you uh, in the chest. Um, and it just, like... Brutal. Like, in a sort Well, I say the chest, like, sort of the sternum up by your shoulder blade. Mm-hmm. And just basically, like, do you know what they call a ball bearing that's moving extremely quickly? <laughs> Is it a bullet? It's a fucking bullet. Right? <laughs> um, you are going to take... Uh, D8 points of okay, piercing damage. Like? This? this? That's yeah. Like... Eight. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. Ow. You shot Ralph. <laughs> That's me down to three health. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. <laughs> Any other experiments you want to run? The good thing is that the... Well, I've got 799 more points. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. I'm going to vote no on that. <laughs> Um, this hurts quite a lot. You could have left them as a trail in the cave. Uh, patting yourself down. <laughs> you thought that was dangerous, leaving them as a trail in the cave. That was like, oh no, that's too risky. Let's throw it instead at the void inside a chaos dragon's head. I have a hand towel if you want to. It's covered in poison! Oh yeah. Sip of water? <laughs> it's cockatrice blood! Uh, yeah, you don't feel good. You don't feel good at all. But it, by all accounts, you, you pat yourself and it feels like the ball bearing has gone clean through you and out the other side. Um, well, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go. <laughs> How would you like to proceed? Uh, swiftly. Agreed. Uh, well, so I've got this magic stone attack. <laughs> <laughs> no, I continue climbing. I've got a medicine skill. Yeah, I can I, try and medicine I, him. I've got, um, I can cure as a spell. If we take a pause in the tunnel, I can, uh, yeah. heal you up a little bit. Might be good. Three health is a bit of a danger yeah, zone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do, I'm going to cast cure wounds on Ralph. Yes, absolutely. So what does I do? While staring pointedly at Eretrix <laughs> as I do it. Uh, it's, uh, regain 1d8 hit points. So I guess it just happens, and then... Um, yes, yeah, you do. So you Good. rush over, okay. and and what, what form does your healing Actually, should Tom roll? Uh, yes, Tom should roll this. Uh, so I um, kind of brace myself in the in the siphon, and I, I clap my hands together a few times until they're, like, warmed up a little bit, and then I just, like, press them against the wound, and suddenly I feel a warm tingle of energy around the, the wound, and it starts to feel better. <laughs> and it's going to heal you for... Six. Cool, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> My teammates Shot almost cancel each other out. <laughs> Shot by a pip in an old brain. <laughs> you give birds a bad name. <laughs> well, let's not waste time worrying about... Sings Marsh. <laughs> Shouldn't let him listen to that elevator music. <laughs> Uh, shall, shall we just uh, keep going? Let's keep, all right, let's keep going. Um, <laughs> we just about survived that <laughs> pedestrian climb. So getting up into this siphon is as simple as kind of like just giving in to the suction force, uh, which um, you can see Marsh is already extremely ready to do. He, he, he stretches out like a cat, belly first. Um, kind of rotating to fully rub himself in the, in the, the juices. <laughs> oh god. The, the extra planar Marsh. chaos juice. And he goes, I'm so glad you've told me this works! 
and he just releases himself from the ground, kind of the willpower leaps slightly into the air, and then you just hear this kind of slithery kind of like... <laughs> and then he's up through the siphon and out of your sight. Uh, Jesus, we should have gone back out of the cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I personally, I'm worried about our own safety, and also I'm worried about Douglas and what he's going to do all by himself out there. In oh, the yeah. Way. I'll go, I'll go back from later. He'll yeah, we we come far enough for him. Yeah, as well. we're in the brain zone. <laughs> Might as well carry on through. I let go of the wall. <laughs> I jump. Try and hit the gravity pocket. I wait and see what happens to those guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got nine health here. I'm going to make you do uh, uh, dex saving. Uh, sorry, dex uh, check. Uh, sorry, acrobatics check. Acrobatics check. Yeah, yeah. Come right up. Ooh. Oh dear. <laughs> uh, Twenty one. I've rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On oh, dex. I'll get a plus three six. Okay. It's not great. No, it's not great. <laughs> so, um, once you have kind of surrendered to this force, uh, so which one of you is going first? Are you going at the same time? Oh, we shouldn't go at the same time. <laughs> uh, I'll probably go first. Okay. Um, so. 21. <laughs> yeah. So, Eritrix, you perceive this is a strange feeling. It's like flight, but wrong. Bad flight. You kind of push. Uh, so, what way around are you doing this? Um, I was imagining that I was sort of with my wings out to sort of increase friction so it couldn't pull me up until we were ready. Mm. And so what I was assuming was I would just draw my wings in and okay. sort of become... But you're, you're more... back to the skull. Is that right? Back to the wall. Well, in that case, because I, I thought that it was trying to tug us up. So all I need to do is basically mm. let go of the wall and tuck myself in and it will just zoom me yeah, up, Yeah, I guess right? you do. So you, you, you took your wings in with enough force to kind of give you a little bit of a down push as well, like with the, the buffeting effect of oh, okay. you drawing your wings. And you take off slightly, and then just the air carries you by itself mm. with your wings tucked, a strange feeling. And you know to sort of tilt your head and, and make yourself as narrow as possible as you shoot towards the siphon. And you just feel a sort of a rushing feeling and the stonework whipping past you at blinding speed it's glowing because of the effect you've entered a tunnel of light essentially streaks of this thing stretching out around you how lovely uh no i mean i yeah. you know as in <laughs> i think i think i'd be having a nice time moving yeah. really fast going through a bright tunnel um, be nice. Lazam, you do what marsh did and kind of go up against the wall without wings to kind of buffet you into the air mm. and it does start to pull you off the ground but it feels like it's having a bit of a harder time of it um because you're so dense mm. and it you get pulled all the way up um but you have this fear this terrible fear as you get to the kind of apex of the skull dome that you're about to drop and be dropped directly into whatever this you know void is um so you kind of like put your hands out in order to get more surface area on the dome of the skull mm. but this obviously makes you bigger momentarily than the gap in the ceiling no no so you just sort of like back first plug it <laughs> oh no yeah, I'm just, guys <laughs> a hand you're a gnome how are you not fitting this <laughs> it's harder than it looks <laughs> Actually, I'm, in a... I'm below you aren't I okay. yeah and yeah, Ralph, yeah, you're Ralph you're just still watching this from below but you're glad you waited now <laughs> I've still got to do it. What if you gently throw a rock at me? It might push me <laughs> Oh, I can do that. <laughs> i got lots of rocks. But look out for the gravity turning. Do, do you want the rock to be enchanted or not enchanted? Oh, um, um, perhaps this is a terrible idea. If you <laughs> flew up here and maybe give me a push, I might go Yeah, up. I could try that, actually. Yeah. Okay, uh, I'm going to get an acrobatics check from Ralph. Okay. Uh, and I've got disadvantage, right? Mm. Because of three... And sixteen. Okay, so, so we'll three take... <laughs> plus four. So you you flap, but there's no space to fly properly in here. So you just sort of take off and manage to buffet yourself, obviously into the the pulling force of the wind, but also into that kind of strange kind of gravitational effect of the um of the uh, void in the center of the room. You kind of spin and whip around it once, still hurtling towards the ceiling. Um, you pick up a kind of crazy amount of speed. Um, but you are being flung as if in a centrifuge now directly towards the siphon. Um, so you got the three. I'm going to need a, uh, a dex saving throw with disadvantage from Lazam. Coming right up. 17 and a seven. Okay. So dex saving throw plus three is a 10. 
Right. Okay. You manage to kind of like, kind of tighten your core. <laughs> like, like you're doing crunches. You're just like, oh, you can see what's about to happen before it happens. Yeah. Um, Ralph, you have, you have moments to tuck your wings in as you realize that you're about to impact, uh, Lazam. You tuck yourself in and you just headbutt him in the chest. <laughs> Ow. Uh, yeah, but you don't, you're not going to take any damage. Um, because you did pass a, hmm. uh, actually, what's your AC? Uh, 15. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. So you sort of take it, but it's, it's actually kind of, uh, it sucks for both of you. <laughs> it's not like damage sucks, but it's like, oh, for fuck's sake, kind of sucks. But this is enough to punt you ass first up into the siphon with Ralph behind you. Uh, I'm helping. <laughs> you sort of spin as you fly, fall down up and you can see, um, just these beams of silver light streaking around you as they elongate and extend to a point become just pure light for a moment as you fly up and up and up and up and up. And then they reach a vanishing point where suddenly it's just blackness and then speed. And then you burst from the ground sail maybe 10 feet in the air before landing with a splash in a pool of Extra plane of dragon brain juice. Oh man. Lazam throws up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a decision he's made. Fair. You are in a stone, obviously artificial stone chamber, clearly like a basement so, so uh, of some kind. Um, the siphon uh, is a, a magical device that uh, actually only uh, funnels to a narrow point directly above you, like a kind of copper uh, sort of. Uh, rod kind of pushing like pointing down the hole and the effect that it has on the room at this point is actually sort of localized it's almost like a you don't know what kind of magic it is but it's obviously taken a long time to set up you've landed in like a basin like a stone basin where this uh goop ends up once it's been pulled up out of the brain from here it is being uh pulled away again into tubes that lead up lead up and away into the walls presumably in part of the architecture of the building itself hmm. um However, there is uh, there is a small staircase leading away, and a kind of access route. Where's Marsh? Um, he has already walked up some of the stairs and said, "I should have done this years ago." <laughs> <laughs> he seems a bit dizzy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, so presumably, we are in the basement of the tower. Right, that's, that's a reasonable weather. guess. Okay, cool. So I guess we should just go up and find mm-hmm. the So you walk up and the door is locked. Interesting. Hmm. I got thieves tools. Oh. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that well. So do some thieves tools on it. Yeah, yeah. give me a... Uh, what's, what would that be? Would that I don't be? know. Like, uh, it's a proficiency of mine, thieves tools. Oh, wait. Oh shit, no, I've got a proficiency, but I actually have the thieves tools. Well, <laughs> I have a crowbar and a hammer. If anyone has any thieves tools, I'm really good with them. <laughs> Does anybody have a crowbar? <laughs> this is the thing, I, I have a hammer and a crowbar, so we could just pick a way to brute force this. Okay, give me a, give me one of them uh, strength checks there, Eretrix. Okay, one! <laughs> <laughs> And you have minus one on that as well. <laughs> you, um, <laughs> you got a zero. You, uh, <laughs> the door punches. As if, as, if, <laughs> as if trying to respond to this uh, request, you instead choose to throw the crowbar to Marsh. It hits him square in the face, and he takes one point of damage. I just roll that dice. The Zan is delighted. He goes, I! <laughs> as the crowbar hits him smack in the face. Well, you should have been paying attention. <laughs> Uh, can I have a go with my crowbar? Yeah, give me a strength check. Okay. I have plus zero on strength, so I can't get a zero. It's a one. <laughs> you, th- you, you, you see what she tried to do? It doesn't go well, but you throw a crowbar at Marsh. And Step aside, you rolled it to him. And he goes, he's still reeling from the first crowbar that hit him in the face after he asked for one. And then the other one comes like whipping through the air, like, boop, 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 boop. He, goes, he goes, ah, and he's sat on his ass. <laughs> like, uh, like a huge bump appearing on his forehead. He's like a trickle of blood coming out of his nose. He starts punched, like, what are you? I'm fucking wrong with you. <laughs> I'm not looking great. <laughs> 
Kate Rush, do you have a key to this bow? Oh, hey, oh, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> I draw my bow. Yeah. <laughs> For God's sake, he's had enough. God, God. Are we killing him? Is that what we're doing? Uh, I can finish the job. Hmm. I mean, I could try again, but I... Mm-hmm. I can give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> you pick up one of the crowbars that's on the floor next to Marge. <laughs> oh, God. 19. Yeah, wow. that's it. Uh, yeah. Having seen this double attempt to give a crowbar <laughs> to the, the shortest member of the party, uh, Lizam, you walk over to the door expertly, uh, push the head into the door bit and go <laughs> crunch, and it goes, wow, and now it's open. <laughs> Cool. It's been a long day, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, how it's done, folks. Um, you enter a uh, a basement. This door was locked, but you're actually in what could be the basement underneath the apartment. Mm. There's, there's, there's casks and, and some sort of cold salted meats and things out for storage, stairwell leading away. You can hear at this point sort of sounds of movement on the floors above. Not like not like dramatic movement, but just like signs of life. We should just start shouting because then they'll help us us oh yeah we're the heroes at the moment aren't we yeah currently they've forgotten about the crimes we committed (laughs) temporarily (laughs) temporarily sorry yeah the goblin might be a problem though (laughs) I wonder if old um, Bunver is still charmed we could put him in one of the bed rolls like you had for your disguise yeah you've been gone for several hours so so group talk Uh, could you create some elevator music for Marsh and Marsh could you just go over there for a minute clearly concussed so we need to get this goblin to the top of the tower I yeah. think we could put him in a sack or something <laughs> Yes. He's a willing accomplice. He'll come with us. Oh, yeah, but, no. but he's out of his brain because of crowbars. <laughs> he's not. He's not going to be able to shut up. We've got to. Also, we're going to have to steer them up. Kill him. They definitely kill him if they see him. Well, do you? Still I want have to kill your him. Your sleep roll disguise. Um. Yeah, it's part of my deeply weird outfit that <laughs> we have mashed together across <laughs> the course of this. Marsh. Across the course of this Let's campaign. Just a minute. You want to. Dis- well, I'm a, but then my hat as well. My right? clothes. I, <laughs> you I need them to wear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know I mean, so you're wearing you're wearing a traveller's cloak, yeah. a bedroll <laughs> as a cloak, yes, a hat, <laughs> and I your normal have, clothes. That's true. I've got some clothes to spare. I have some manacles. So if we put them <laughs> on him, we can pretend he's a prisoner until there's an opportune moment. Okay, that's actually a much better plan than the sack. But I just want to put him in a sack. <laughs> I hate goblins. Do you have a sack? <laughs> He's wearing one of the things he's wearing is probably like sack like. Sac- yeah, I could turn oh, it into okay. a sack. I could take I could take this um make sure oh, so that off. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I'm willing to take this off to wrap it around a goblin. <laughs> um I could fashion a little sack out of this. I mean he won't like it, but he'll, he'll, I don't care. <laughs> so yeah, what are we which one of these many options we Why is Ralph, what do you think? <laughs> um the manacles option, to be honest, seems better. Like, yeah. Disguising the fact that he is a goblin is, good, is a tall order, even with the hat and the sack. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Let's do that. Cool. Uh, I mean, is he concussed enough that we can just do He's that? He's quite amenable. <laughs> He's trying to dance, yeah. but it's not... It doesn't look good. It didn't look good anyway, but it's like... Oh, no. He's, he's entered that stage of the night where it's like, put him to bed. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to just put the manacles on him. He's like, ah! Hey. And then he lets you. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, I think that's sorted. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good job. Great. Brilliant. <laughs> job done. So it's time to go up, covered in dragon brain yeah. slop uh, yeah. from head to toe, presumably. Hey, after. we're down here! <laughs> Is it, do you shout that? Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't we? Okay. You hear some sort of like commotion upstairs. I said it, damn it. And, uh, you, <laughs> and the sound of people moving around. You hear the sound of the door open and, um, Bunver pops his head around the corner and goes, what is going on? What did, where did you come from? Hey, uh. Hello. <laughs> where do you think? Look at us. You came up the siphon. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Yeah. Good God. That's what I said. <laughs> What's that? And he points to this glowing. Is, did you put Marsh in a sack? No, not, he's just, just manacles. manacles. And then, sort of, the light days, he goes, 
You caught it. Well, we should take this to a private chamber. Right, we're in my basement. <laughs> oh, all right. Do you want to close the door? Okay. Goes back up a few steps, closes the door. You're in his basement. Great. Okay. So you told me, Bunver, that uh, with the Goblin Marsh's help, we could fix this and um, save the folks who are turning into ash. We found him. He does indeed have uh, an idea to fix this, and it involves using your machine. What does he want to do? Marsh? <laughs> <laughs> we hit him a couple of times with crowbars. <laughs> I, I turn off the elevator music. <laughs> Marsh, what did you want to do with the machine? <laughs> um, I'm going to make... Uh, so can, can I get a investigation check from uh, Lazam, who speaks Goblin? One. <laughs> That's a one. Um, he appears to be saying, I am a special boy over and over and over again. I'm a special boy. Look at me dance. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, uh, I've actually got some water. Can I splash some water on his face? Yeah. Can you hit him with it? Do you need me to roll for it? Oh, come on. <laughs> and whose water do you use? Mine. Okay, good. <laughs> yes, good choice. Not fit. Um, I have holy water. Come on. Okay, so if Marsh kind of shakes it off a bit and says, <laughs> Marsh, what did you need to do with Bunva's machine? I need... Crystal, crystal, all of the crystals, and I'll show you. Bunvis, like this is absurd. <laughs> well, Bunvis, it's gonna happen. How many more people have dusted while we were away, though? We l- lost a f- few. Uh-huh. So uh huh. So, how many options do you think you have right now? Uh, fine, <laughs> fine. Mm. Um, you head upstairs and there are a few people terrified looking people clustered around Bunver's entrance area there's a sort of sense of dismay in the air a few guardsmen stand about not knowing what to do one of them says did you did you hear about did you did you hear about Moraga he's a bit cat he's a bit cat what do you mean? Is he still in? And then you hear the muttering kind of fade off as you pass them. Um, you obviously turn heads to Aracocra, glowing with stuff. A stone man, three foot tall, glowing, covered in stuff, leading in chains a mostly naked, delirious <laughs> goblin. And Bunza. <laughs> if this doesn't go well... Cast that cloud of fog. <laughs> I'm always, re- I'm always just about to cast that in you <laughs> situation. I think are out of spell slots. Am I? <laughs> you cast two things, right? I, I have actually. Yeah, I cast um, a cure. I, I, oh, the cure was. You know, in your in your whatever arcane sense you have of your own capacity, <laughs> you've cast <laughs> your last fog cloud for today. <laughs> There's no cloud of shame to get you out of this one. No, sadly, I'm also out of everything. What can you do, Pip? Um. Mm. I could do a martial arts display. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Pat, not the time or the place. Let's hope nothing goes wrong. But it's an option. <laughs> I've also, like I said, got 899 ball back. <laughs> the last time it's you used one. spell, it, was, <laughs> it did more damage than anything else in the game when you used it last time. It's <laughs> <laughs> like uh, a sniper bullet. Yeah. So let's bear that in mind. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, fine. You follow around the staircase, leading Marsh back to the laboratory. Since you were last here, Bunva has replaced the glass jar that Eretrix kicked over. (laughs) No reason. And Bunva says, weary, obviously having one of the worst two days of his entire life. Do... Do what it takes, Goblin. Save us. I'm ready, my bow. Okay. Uh, Marsh kind of totters over to you, Eretrix, and holds up his shackles like, Go on! All right. I train my bow and arrow on Marsh. Okay. He, um... He sort of 
uh, stumbles into the centre of the room and starts to look around, like getting a sense of it. Looks at the pipes, looks at the cupboard on the walls, and he turns to Bumber and says, Where's all your crystals? And Bumvis just sort of points at that cabinet. And Marsh scatters over to it, pulls himself up, opens the door, and reveals these racks upon racks upon racks of these faintly glowing eggs, the fuel egg. And he just starts taking them all out, setting them on the floor, gathering them up. And when he realizes they're quite sturdy and don't shatter easily, um, which he tested earlier by banging them on the ground, but now he's sort of like playing with them, investigating them. He starts to bundle them up in his arms in in the biggest heaping armful he can carry, which is almost all of them. He's only little. Um, And he staggers over uh, and he holds onto one of them and he just tips forwards and lets the rest of them tumble into the left chamber. And then he waddles to the center of the room as you look on and sticks the cell into that central point of the fulcrum, but moving as if by a kind of uh, familiarity with this thing. And he smears himself on that fuel (laughs) siphon rod plinth thing, getting some of that juice up on it as well. And then with a a series of dexterous bounds, he obviously having clearly shaken off his concussion, um, (laughs) leaps uh, mounts and rides the lever to the ground and then springs hand over hand and leaps himself into the rightmost chamber. There's... I think we might have <laughs> fucked it. <laughs> in one chamber, in the less, last, in the center, a burst of light, rippling, coruscating, void, planar, chaos energy shines through that central fuel cell, which explodes. In the other chamber, the leftmost chamber, the fuel Inside, the, these crystalline shapes start to spin and merge together and melt, and they shoot out onto the walls of the thing, and a vast kind of globule of energy shoots into the machine and down to the chamber that contains Marsh. There's a Can bright... I shoot the chamber. <laughs> uh, oh my god. <laughs> as in the one that... Which one? Uh, the one that Marsh is in, that he's about to receive. Uh, give me a dex roll. Two. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't shoot me. The, the arrow sails into like the energy mm. and starts to go faster. No, oh, <laughs> not again. <laughs> um, and it spins around, but this time, because I'm feeling forgiving, it just whips up into the ceiling <laughs> and you just hear the arrow just sort of break against a stone tile okay. somewhere. I tried, guys. <laughs> Can we stop shooting at the magic shit? <laughs> the, um, the machine rocks and Bunford goes, no, what is, he, what is he doing? You can't, you can't merge change with change. <laughs> and, um, the, uh, the entire chimeric disruptor starts to shake dangerously. That leftmost chamber just explodes off in the corner of the room, furthest from where you are. But then it settles. And the light from that rightmost chamber fades. And you can see Marsh, or something like Marsh, he's the same size, more than a little, but there's something uncanny about the way his skin is moving. He sort of adjusts and shifts and sort of stumbles forward out of the chamber. And with this, a suddenly like a wave. Imagine like, uh, you know, when you see like, Uh, a magnet pass over like one of those um, sort of things that are made out of metal pins that you can push your face into to get an impression of your pin. Mm -hmm. Like a magnet pass over it, like a ripple out of his body, like a sound wave, just as a a folding fin of crystalline spines kind of grows up out of him and then fades back inside again. And he looks at you, white light in his eyes and says, I am Christ Marsh. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Marsh got swole. I knocked another arrow. Oh, 
Oh, play the music. He liked the music. That's <laughs> okay. a really good idea. Oh. Are you supposed to decision to, to play the elevator music for Marsh? Okay. <laughs> the, <laughs> the music. For Chris Marsh, sorry. Yeah. The, mu- the music um, starts to uh, play in his mind. I'm going to make him do a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> this time it's Christmas tunes. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas music, the most powerful weapon of all. Um, so... He has <laughs> failed that. <laughs> so you see something strange happen. Not only does he begin to dance again, but the these crystalline shapes as they grow out of his body start to like mimic and change and adapt to the form of the music. Like um not just the 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 rises and the falls and the, the melody of the thing, but like a mimicry of uh, in fact, I'm going to make you do do an investigation check, all of you. Okay. Um, and if you have any relevant musical skill, <gasps> bagpipes. <laughs> I got seventeen. Wow, I got nineteen on my investigation. I got ten. Add your proficiency bonus to that, Pip. Uh, do I just? You've get... all done really well somehow on this. Mm. But, uh, so, um, what you see is you gain this sense of like using your musical knowledge that apparently you all have because <laughs> that was a good role. Um, you realize that his body is mimicking the, uh, what he believes must be the source of the sound. Like when there is a, when the, this music you've created. It's let it snow, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> when there are bells, you see shapes like, like metal loops clanging together kind of emerge from his body and fold back in again. Um, when there are, when there's like a little horn section, you don't even know want to know what happens. It's <laughs> grotesque. Oh god! Um, you can see he's he's sort of slave to this thing. He's mimicking it, and then he uh, fails the wisdom saving throw again. <laughs> he's just dancing. <laughs> Musical instruments are bursting in crystalline form from his tiny body, and then shooting back inside. What's the best musical instrument we can use to transform him? Like xylophone. <laughs> Well, I'm wondering whether, like, because it sound. Hmm, hmm. Could could you make it sound like you know when they do little donkey at school and make the <laughs> coconut noise for the clopping, so that he turns into sort of two cup shapes, and I can squirt poison into them. <laughs> No, <laughs> that's that a too much. Uh, Fight worse than death. I can I can certainly play some music that has coconut <laughs> cups in it. So you, <laughs> you can take it from there, right? So we're assuming oh, yeah. that like Marsh is still is is like on the turn here. Like he's he's is it doesn't seem like this is going to help the dragon situation <laughs> much. Uh, what he's done to himself here. So do we want to put him down? That's the question, or or talk to him. We could try to communicate with him while he's dancing. See what he true. wants. What does Chris, what does Chris Marsh want? That's true. I, I shout that. What do you want, Chris Marsh? <laughs> what do you really want? <laughs> Why? Tell me what you want? What you really, really want? <laughs> <laughs> he turns into seven women. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> he's failed his wisdom saving throw again. So uh, he goes. I want this. I want this. No, he's at three a.m. point in the club <laughs> night. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, so we've got a short amount of time to contain or destroy him or do something. Uh, what's Bum- what's Bumper up to at this point? Bumper says, If you destroy him, if you destroy Christ Marsh, then they'll all die. Hmm. Uh, love killing goblins, though. <laughs> really love killing goblins. It's just my thing. While he's dancing, could we get those manacles back on him? <laughs> Do you think manacles will hold him? He seems to be some sort of, like, Perhaps transdimensional true. Christmas being now. <laughs> what if we... Can we destroy the machine now? I mean, I was against it before, but it's, it's getting to that point. I think the machine might have done its work if all of that energy has gone into this one... one weird goblin. <laughs> then it might be too late. Uh, can we... Can I ask, uh, Bunvo, what should we do? We we could return him to the to the dragon. 
Maybe there he'll remember what he is, what he's supposed to be. You could switch that music off. <laughs> <laughs> no! I think that's pacifying him. So if he's in this state, like he, he might be, we might be able to move him. If we take him back down mm. and throw him into the brain, we might all die. It might explode. <laughs> he, we starts don't to, he starts to gyrate less quickly. No, no, look out. He's wearing <laughs> off. <laughs> and he's like, I a second. I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want this. He's at the 5 a.m. come down point. <laughs> I don't want fun. this. Make it louder. <laughs> uh, Now's the time to drop the beat. Now's the time, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> okay, drop the bass. I'm going to make him take a uh, performance check. <laughs> Excellent. I don't think I to use that. I got plus two on that. Uh, five plus two. Oh, no. Uh, good. So it's uh, I'm make, uh, I'll tell you what, it's a contested check against his wisdom. Hmm. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> He, he almost stops like he's about to fucking move. <laughs> and then, but he, he does it. He's like, no, I will not get down. <laughs> You've been dancing a while. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like some water? <laughs> you got to hydrate. Persuasion check. You got to Persuasion check. Uh, hang on. Five. <laughs> And what? Nah! <laughs> and he just licks a big line of liquid dragon brain off his bicep. Oh, no, not <laughs> and He's taking he, another hit. As he does that, he he starts to think about the taste of it. And like almost like, if you imagine like liquid solid crystal, like flows, like sloughs off the side of him, forms like a white glowing pool and then whips back up inside him. Mm. Yeah, this is, uh, this situation is out of control. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna take one of my, the arrows that I coated in Cockatrice Blood earlier. I'm gonna fire it, loose it at Marsh. Okay. <laughs> so give me a dex. Fucked it. It's a one. <laughs> one. <laughs> um, the, oh my god. <laughs> you guys roll the most amazing ones. <laughs> um, the arrow kind of sails towards him. And, um, begins to whip around him. Mm. And then he thrusts out a little claw hand and grabs it out of the air and looks at it. You think for a terrible moment that he's about to start singing into it, <laughs> but he doesn't. He stares at it and runs a fingertip down the, the tip of the thing and puts it to his lips. And then just this flare of like feathers and frills and cockatrice kind of bursts from the back of him in crystalline form, but this time it stabilizes. No, no. He licks it and steps forward now with sort of like uh, sort of jagged crystalline wings and talons and a frill around his neck, what a cockatrice might have. It's probably just as well I didn't feed him the entire poison thing then. Uh, hmm. How close are we planning on getting? I mention this because ball bearings are still an option. Mm. Uh, I'm certainly backing away from whatever the hell that... Do you have a plan other than throwing things at it? <laughs> no. Do you? Uh, Bunva starts to walk forwards. Uh -huh. Starts to approach and uh, hands up and says, Old friend, you need to calm down. Marsh gyrates a little less quickly. <laughs> Says, what is it? Banva. I have it now. Now I am bone mother. And Banva says, no, you're not. Not yet. You need to go to her. Be with her. And Marsh uh, slaps the ground and says, I was with her. You took her from me. And... He lashes out at Bunva with a talon. He's going to hit for a certain amount of damage. Mm. Mm. Bunva kind of stumbles to the ground, wounded. And starts to clutch at this wound he's just taken from Christ Marsh. So how close are we to the siphon? To walk back through the building. Can I try a persuasion on him? Well, hang on, because we're still in the basement, right? No, you're in the lab. 
Oh, okay, yeah. So, I mean, the siphon sucks up, and can maybe Bumbo could reverse it, and we can send him down. Yeah. Perhaps. So... I don't know. That's, I, I don't know. I'm just a deep gnome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... Foxy deep gnome wisdom. <laughs> Uh, can I try a persuasion check on him and just like uh, do pretty much do what Bumbo was trying to do and and uh, just ask him to calm down and help okay. us? Yeah. Uh, Seventeen plus two. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, Marsh, you need to chill out, and we need your help to to stop this. Um, he steps towards you, uh, away from Bunza. And says, I like you. Remember you from before I saw everything. (laughs) (laughs) Good, good. And he starts to, he fixes his eyes on you and he grows a second set of wings. (laughs) Uh, These crystals are dark. Um, They're as close as he can get to black feathers. Hmm. And says, I... Have something to do. And a part of his face ripples with the structure of like a skull, like a dragon, draconic skull kind of ripples across his face. But then it fades again. And he steps towards you and says, No! Chris Marsh is power. Could just kill. Ah. And he starts to sort of stagger towards you ever closer. Those talons are still there. Or you could use that power to stop the bad thing that Bunva was doing. I hate Bunva. Yeah. Let's stop the terrible thing he was doing. Stop. Go to mother. Stop. Or keep going. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> he says, Show me. And sort of moves towards you, just kind of <laughs> coruscating, rippling, gobbler bird, uh, cockatrice thing. Show you what? Take me to her. To the bone mother? Yeah. Down the siphon? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, have we reversed the siphon yet? <laughs> Uh, How are we doing on that? Cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> cross that trans-dimensional. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll lead him. feet and turns and doesn't look good. Cool, cool. <laughs> uh, look, we're all going downstairs. I'll give you a hand. Uh, Bunva leans on you as you make your way back down through the building. Chris Marsh is following you, Ralph. Okay. As he enters the stairwell... His lower limbs become hard blocks of stone that clatter squarely against the brickwork as he kind of stagger, fall, flap, fly, scrambles down the stairs. That's cool. It's not my place. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You reach the, the basement and... Uh, when people turn and, oh wait, sorry, you reach the landing. And when people turn and see him, they begin to scream and flee out into the street. What is that thing? Somebody says. You don't know if, who it's referring to. <laughs> <laughs> Could be any of us, right? <laughs> Well, if they're not impeding our progress, I think we should just keep going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, you, uh, and you get to the basement, the, uh, siphon, the door to the siphon room has been forced to jar. Um, uh, Marsh at this point is all over the place, coruscating <laughs> flesh turning into barrels and pieces of ham. <laughs> He's um, gone ham. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he rolls across one of the discarded crowbars that you threw at him earlier and pauses and the jutting shape, an iron bar folded on itself flickers across his skull Ooh. and then emerges from his head like a kind of crazy horn. <laughs> <laughs> but he doesn't turn yet. Is he going to fit down the siphon? 
<laughs> just <laughs> let's push him in. Squash him. I, I think he can like morph and shit. So cool. yeah, yeah cool, cool, cool. Here it is, Marsh. Your your direct line to the Bone Mother. Bunver, can you like flip it into reverse or something? Uh, you turn around and Bunver has completely stopped moving. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, I'm going to go over and check. He's he's with us. Are you not dead? What are you doing? What kind of thing are you doing? Uh, I'm going to bow down and like see if he's breathing. And try and check his pulse as far as the deep gnome understands. That's a medicine check. Give me a, give me give me one of them deep d rolls. Medicine is wisdom. Nineteen. Okay. Well, um, you see a kind of panic in his eyes, but you don't know if you're reading that in to mm-hmm. it. You reach out and touch him, and his skin is cold and at the point around where that uh blow was struck to him by marsh you can mm. see he's turning to stone oh no guys we don't have long with bunver he's not mm. bunver can you tell us what to do to reverse the the siphon he's turning to stone <laughs> but like he stopped moving and his mouth isn't moving he's oh, okay. frozen you can maybe see like a glint of panic in his eyes but that's the extent of the communication mm. but, yeah the, i I, it's beyond my knowledge to help him at this point. Okay, there must be... Can we look around to see if there's, like, a lever? Okay, do an investigation check for the room. Cool. 17... You can see that trailing away from that uh, copper rod is a a sort of series of, of pipes, part of that sort of gilded apparatus elsewhere, <coughs> um, reaches a point on the wall which leads to a kind of complex looking uh, series of uh, tubes There's, uh, and with each of them is stuffed with what appear to be some kind of like reagent, that kind of thing, like uh, crystalline structures, liquid Shit. of different colors. Uh, is there anything that looks like it might obviously m- make it do the opposite, like a lever to pull? or Not a- at first glance. Okay, uh, can we investigate it for further? I can take a look. Okay. If that's okay. Mm-hmm. Is it a uh, perception? Mm-hmm. That's an eight, but perception is trained, so... You... Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Uh, uh, yeah, it probably wouldn't be, probably oh, would have been an investigation, but it's fine, because neither oh, of those things are actually sufficient. Oh, <laughs> yeah, beyond, yeah, yeah. beyond that, this is some sort of device stuffed with... Um, Stuff. Hang on, hang on. All we need to do is for it to stop working so that it just goes back to normal gravity. I'm going to hit it with a hammer. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, give me a strength. Give me a strength. <laughs> Six minus <laughs> one. Five. Um, you smack it and you, your hammer bounces off the glass. <laughs> it leaves a crack behind and this peeling sound of just you know, hammer on glass shrieks through the room and a huge blade of crystal grows out of marsh from the direction of the sound. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone else want to have a go at that? I yeah. got this shovel. Cool. Going to hit it with a shovel. Yeah, you've got the best strength. I figure as long as we destroy it, then we'll just chuck him down the hole. Hmm. Marsh seems distressed by what's just happened and says, Stop it! Snap! Nah! And sort of stands up and starts to bear down on the two of you. Mm. Like, not not again. Okay. Uh, hmm. Don't you want to go down there, Marsh? He's confused. To He's... be with a bone mother? Can we pull bits out of it? Um, again, it's a strength check. Uh, one of you probably should try that because I'm minus one all over the show. That's a nine. Um, strength plus one. Yep, ten. Uh, you pull at the apparatus and a few of the pieces give way and you can feel the siphon's energy starting to change, both sort of pushing and pulling in the room. It feels really weird. Mm. Marsh's crystalline body starts to undulate up and down like a sine wave. We drag him off, give it another... Maybe another whack. Maybe another whack. <laughs> yeah. Shall I have another go? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've got the best strength, I think. That's 20. Nine? Well, I rolled 19, yeah. but it's 20. So you're giving it a whack? Uh, no, I'm trying to wrench stuff out of it. This time you grab two of the cylinders that have come slightly loose and you pull and they come free of the wall um, with a kind of, there's a jolt of energy up your hands. It's not something you've, it just feels strange. Hmm. Um, 
and the uh the you can the, the pull of the the push of the siphon whatever you would have been fe- previously feeling uh starts to change and you start to feel a a pull like a deep pull the opposite direction Whew. it's Whew. starting to feel stronger and stronger okay we don't have much time <laughs> uh we could just leave can we and get marsh the door the, yeah, yeah get marsh to the middle and then yeah cool. marsh sort of marsh <clears throat> sorry merging <laughs> marsh sort of looks at you and says She's calling. She's pulling at me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, go, Marsh. <laughs> go, Marsh! <laughs> he bellows. <laughs> and he leaps to the edge of the siphon. Into He puts his hands out. And in that moment, his body ripples. And he takes a form of a kind of shining silver fish, cockatrice, goblin, <laughs> bird thing. <laughs> and he folds his arms back and just whoop, is gone into the siphon. Sweet. Cool. Uh, we might however, we should leave. <laughs> at this point, you start to see the brickwork of the siphon start to pull in. Oh, Time to go. Fuck it. We've got to run. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to run. I, I, I run upstairs yelling, everybody Well, out. hang on. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay, so you begin to run across this, um, up the stairs, back towards the door. As you do, Lazam, a loose brick flies out of the wall at your head. Oh. Roll a dexterity saving throw. Oh. One. (laughs) You take a brick to the face. Uh, The irony is not lost on anyone (laughs) present. (laughs) You take uh, D4 points of bludgeoning damage. I've taken one. One point of bludgeoning damage right to the face, but you stagger backwards and start to slide towards the siphon. No. Eretrix and Ralph. Mm. What are you doing? God damn it. Um... Is there anything I could be holding on to? Um, well, there's the sort of tattered remains of this device, whatever it was. There's the piping leading up to the walls, the mechanics of the siphon itself, is the bricks. Mm. I think I want to get out of the room if possible. Okay. So, um... Oh, yeah. Acrobatics check for you, Ralph. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, advantage of uh, proficiency on this, so... <laughs> it's good, because it's a natural one. <laughs> That's a natural one. The next one's a... Um, natural five. Five, <laughs> five plus four, so nine. Um, okay, okay. You leap for the stairs that's nine right yeah leap for the stairs but you get to the top step and this is difficult going the 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 pull is pulling you backwards further and further and you hear at this point this booming laugh cackle roar uh cry of exultation echo up through the siphon can i play it's beginning to look a lot like christmas for him <laughs> uh, you, you 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 have to kind of blind throw that through the yeah thing but <laughs> Somewhere deep in the depths of the world, a change goblin plummeting towards the brain of an <laughs> ancient dragon does start to hear. It's starting to look a lot like Christ Marsh. <laughs> God. Um, and you, but you stumble as you turn to cast this spell and ca- you know, stumble to the ground. You're having to cling with your talons as the brickwork starts to pull backwards. The door is ahead of you. Through the door, you can see Bunva frozen, turning to stone, starting to teeter. How big is Bundva compared to the hole? Uh, he is bigger than the hole. Okay, sure. Okay. <laughs> so, acrobatics check for Eretrix. It was a four plus five, because I am super proficient. It's a nine. nine. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, so, this... Um, you know, this, the surface of the room is not easy to navigate as things start to give way, as the siphon starts to draw everything in, now apparently enhanced by some other force. The powerful reverse effect uh, drags at you. You stagger up the stairs past the momentarily stunned Lazam, who's just had a brick in the face, but no one cares about that. <laughs> apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you uh, stagger past... Um, Well, you get to the top of the stairs where you find Ralph and then you stumble forwards the doorway and Bunva is there, but just inches out of your grasp. Can I try and help Eretrix up? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Tom uh, Senior just pointed at himself and did a desperate gesture. Mm. Uh, uh, Lazam, if you would like to try and clamber forwards, I need you to take an acrobatics check with disadvantage. (laughs) 
Uh, so that's six. Uh, plus three, so nine. What is that? <laughs> <Sorry, laughs> you you you've all been three. rolling nines ever since I threw a change goblin down a big hole. <laughs> 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 um, so, it's because uh, it's the really changey number. It could be a six or a nine. It is. <laughs> um, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, you you manage to kind of like clamber forward, but then you trip over Ralph as well, and the three of you are just sprawled on this landing, being dragged slowly backwards towards the hole. Hmm. Someone needs a bright plan, and soon I could let go of all the ball bearings <laughs> so they go down the hole. Because that should satisfy. What that, what that do? Uh, shoot him. Oh, <laughs> yeah, possibly. But that's kind of the limit of my ideas because um, the other idea so, was to put to to push Bundra down like, the hole. I know from personal it. from personal experience, I know those ball bearings do nine damage each of it, <laughs> um, and uh, or maybe it was eight. But didn't Bundra say that if we kill this thing, everyone dies? Oh yeah. Hmm. Well. I mean, yeah, yeah. he's he's down there. I think that problem is solving itself. We just need to survive. <laughs> like, That's just need true. to get out of here. I think. So I've got I've got some rope, but I don't know if I can. I'm in a position to really like snare it around something. Um, I yeah, just, so really the things like, nearest to you, the brickwork of the stairs, which is sort of pulling desperately, crumbling away. You're clinging to gaps in the mortar at this point, yeah. and your two compatriots that are next to you. I'm gonna draw both my short swords and stab them into the ground in an attempt to get better purchase. Okay. And recover. You do that. Excellent. Ka-ching, ka-ching. Uh, do we have space to fly? Um, yes. Well, we so can do that. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can do that. You're birds. It's difficult. Um, it's obviously difficult circumstances because of the rushing air. Yeah. Hmm. I'd like to give it a go. Okay. Hmm. Um, all right. From a, from a prone position, I'm going to ask you to just take an acrobatics check with disadvantage. That's a seven, and that is an eighteen. So takes, seven plus four. So eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, you manage to kind of pick yourself up. Uh, Lazam has moved to one side and jammed his short swords into the the soft mortar of the brick, kind of finding himself temporary purchase. This gives you the space to kind of spread your wings and beat them and kind of propel yourself forward, more like a leap than full flight, but enough to reach the door frame, which you cling to. And you can just about pull yourself through into the chamber beyond. Eratrix. So I have acrobatic proficiency. Mm -hmm. So I would like to try again with the, um, with the aim of, you know, being able to be nimble enough or to get purchase on that statue uh, on, well, on Bunfer. Okay. (laughs) Try and sort of (laughs) shove him in our, in our, path um, between the thing and us. Fine. So uh, that'll be another acrobatics check with a disadvantage mm-hmm. because of the conditions. Oh, for God's sake. Six. And a one. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> That's a one. So you, following Ralph's example, you beat your wings hard and flap, but you were a little bit further back than he was. Mm-hmm. And you just fly backwards towards the siphon hole. Um, you know, your wings are outstretched, your body splayed. You feel this, the tremendous pull of the gravity of this thing. Can I, uh, as a reaction to that, um, just try and scrabble on things with my talons because that feels like a reasonable thing to do in this situation. <laughs> um, so for the moment you are in the air. Damn it. <laughs> um, but you are obviously, you know, bigger than this hole. I scream. <laughs> uh, you two turn to see Eratrix f- dragged backwards by the force of the siphon. So, uh, I, I used my rope before. Do I still have it? Or did I leave it behind? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can use my rope, though. I can uh, unhook it from my belt and hold okay. it onto a sword with one hand, attempt to fling the rope with my other hand. Give me a dex. All right. Are you flinging it to me? Uh, I'm flinging it to Eritrex. Me! <laughs> it's about to go down a hole! <laughs> um, so that's uh, 14. Um, you f- um, I'll tell you that's sufficient to get the rope out and fling it accurately towards Eritrex. Yeah. Oh, no. um, I'm going to give you that reaction now. Mm. So I want you to make a 
Uh, what would this be? That's fair. It's not a deck saving throw because you're not dodging something. Isn't there a grapple thing in, in the combat rules? No, that's game? that's like um, wrestling. Okay. It might be an acrobatics. Um, I'll tell you what. Call it an acrobatics check. I think that's that's reasonable. Okay. Thirteen plus five is eighteen. This rope flings out towards you, whips out, kind of goes taut because it itself is being pulled by the the siphon. And you reach out a talent and grab the end. Mm. And you're now hanging from this rope that is being held at the other end by uh, Lazam, who is basically taking your entire weight at this point. Ow! Oh. <laughs> How close am I to the siphon? Um, only a couple of feet away. How big is it? Three feet across. And how wide am I? Um, you're a big bird. <laughs> Um, notably <laughs> chunky. <Poor thing. laughs> um, and I got through there okay. You had to tighten yourself up. That's true. What are you thinking? Would your chest block it? I was going to say, I'm... Do you know what? I'm going to spread out my wings oh my and God. I'm going to let go. Oh oh my God. No! <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to close my eyes. (laughs) I don't want to fall asleep. You can hear Marsh distantly singing. (laughs) Cause I'll miss you, baby. It's not worth it, (laughs) Alex. It's not worth it. You you let go of the rope and feel the void begin to take you. Uh, You sail backwards. You spread your wings wide. Is that right? Yep. Um, You, you uh, kind of, how do you orient yourself in the air? So, well, I imagined that I was falling backwards towards the thing because obviously yes. I would have been facing away from it. Yeah, that's the right. Rope. So I'm imagining just f- letting go, falling backwards, sort of like so that my back is towards the siphon and my wings are outstretched. So your back. Basically, I've tried to make myself as wide as possible. What part of your back? Oh, well, I assumed middle. Okay. Um... <laughs> Like sort of, you know, this this part, like upper torso, like widest mm. part, chest, with where okay. my wings are strong. What are your monk abilities? I'm trying to, I'm just trying to make this a thing. Oh god, um, martial arts. Yeah, martial arts. No, I mean, um, no, I mean your key abilities. Like what? Oh, yeah, that's the thing that's happened. <coughs> cool. Uh, so flurry of blows, but that's after an attack action. Uh, patient defense, which is to take the dodge action as a bonus okay, action fine. on your turn, and step of the wind, which is spending one to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action, and my jump distance is doubled. Okay, I'm going to ask you to take a strength saving throw. Okay. Have I really just fucked it? Four. <laughs> Minus one. <laughs> Three. Oh, God. Um, oh, no. You crash backwards into the brickwork surrounding the siphon. You feel it hit your shoulder blades, your wings, your pinions uh, outstretched behind you, your talons out. You take, let's say, uh, D6 bludgeoning damage. Okay. Six. (laughs) Okay, you take six points of damage. So I am on seven. Simply from the impact. Yeah. Um, And then I'm going to... uh, But you remain conscious from the force of it. Guys, I'm out of ideas. (laughs) I'm going to ask you to make a strength check. I did. That was, that was a saving throw. That was oh. about bracing for impact. Oh, oh <laughs> no! Oh, my God. oh no! It's three. It was nice knowing you. Oh. Um, oh. Your talons outstretched either side, grip at the stonework, and then let go, and you fold up and get <laughs> pulled backwards into the siphon, wings bent forwards. <laughs> Eretrix. <laughs> okay, time is in slow mo here as this happens. How did you live this long? <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you what are you do, doing? How as this happens, the suction force of the siphon notably decreases because 
there's something blocking you to some extent. <laughs> Eretrix, you don't get pulled fa- back fast as you think. You go in, and then you just start to scrape down the inside of this siphon. Mm. It's pulling you, and you can feel like the light behind your eyes, like you're going towards something that's glowing. You're going into the light, Eretrix. Mm. Oh, God. I'm like that guy we know who got stuck down that chimney at party. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot like this. <laughs> Neither of us can turn them to stone, right? That's not a thing that either of us have. Uh, I've got some petrify. Oh, both of our spell slots are all used up. Uh, but I've got arrows coated in blood that might petrify oh, something man. eventually. The cockatrice venom. Yeah. <laughs> Just How go with a whole load of those. That'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, what about Bunva? Isn't he made of stone? <laughs> yes. But he would, like, she's already wedged in the... Yeah, you don't want to hit her with Bunva. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's a plan. Still uh, kind of smarting for the ball bearing thing, so I wouldn't mind. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I don't have a rope, so... I've got a rope. I mean, is, is, I... is it long enough to reach as far as... I mean, how long are these ropes? Like, 50 feet. 50 feet, oh, that seems like it might be enough to... If I could swing it back towards... But even then... I'm a deep gnome. I'm not going to be able to actually pull. You have the a, higher strength of all of us. <laughs> it, yeah, that says more about the bird people than it does about the deep gnome, I think. Imagine if this had paid off! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but we do have a rope. Might as well try. Yeah, I don't think there's it, much else we're going to be able to do. Where am I relative to you, Tom? Because I got so you, out of the room. You got to the door frame and kind of pulled yourself out of the room. Yeah. And so, where's Tom? Uh, top of the stairs, clinging for dear life to two short swords. Is that further away from the siphon than me? Uh, it's about midway. Uh, basically, uh, like, who is closest with the siphon? Uh, Tom is. Oh, okay. sorry, Lazam is. Um, okay, so if you... Uh, you can throw your rope to Eretrix, and she can hold on to it. Um, I'm wondering if I can support you in any way. Like, mm. I don't have a rope anymore, but I do have a sling, which I think if you like have a string sling like unravel, that's a few feet of... of stuff, mm. right? That you uh, yeah. Anything, grab onto at this if point, I can... anything at this point will help. I don't know actually if, if grabbing onto me is any more secure than what you're already holding onto. Um, so I've jammed my swords into uh, the mortar, which isn't like the most secure, but it's a better than you're going to get probably from other things in the room that are all, you know, everything is crumbling into this this vortex. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll like lay out my sling within grabbing range of you. So if you need it, like if you lose grip on or something, then you can grab that. Okay, so what's going to happen now is I'm going to attempt to flick the rope so that it reaches Eretrix um, with one hand and then bearing in mind my other hand is gripping onto this sword you're asking me to grip onto your sling instead and hold, no. be held suspended <laughs> I'm offering my sling so that if you need it like if your sword comes loose you could grab I can grab that instead. Instead. okay that's yeah. good that's you the option don't need to do it okay I'll, I'll, I'll attempt to do this to give throw something within Eretrix's reach to grab thank you <laughs> so you the first thing is throwing the rope which is not going to be difficult. So you, you fling the rope out because the rope wants to go down the hole. Yeah. You fling it out and you let more of its length go because you probably didn't give her the full 50 feet initially because that wouldn't make any sense. Yep. So, and it just gets sort of like swallowed up like a tube of spaghetti going into a hoover mm. by the, <laughs> <laughs> by the, uh, by the siphon. Mm. It's down the hole. You see this is an end of a rope just sort of shooting down towards you. It wants to go, it wants to go past you because it wants mm. to get past the obstruction. Mm. Um, but it just sort of like, uh, crumples into you. Uh, you've got your two claws out holding the holding the wall, Eretrix, but I would say it would be trivial to kind of like try and hook it, one of them around the rope that's come down towards you. Lazan, what happens next? Um, so I shout to Eretrix, grab the rope, grab the rope. <laughs> and uh, if Eretrix chooses to grab the rope, I'm going to hold on for dear life. <laughs> As I'm about to take the full force of not only Eretrix, but the additional... Uh, kind of gravitational pull of the vortex making her seem even yeah so I figure I can try and help by trying to scrabble against the okay. sides of the thing yeah. but it, I don't know how much that would offset the, the fact I'm so being I'm going to say hands. that that would offset the disadvantage okay um, in fact what I'll make you do is a DC 10 strength check okay uh, so just roll d20 that's the wrong dose. Oh, I as in, so, oh, sorry, okay. as, as in you're looking at the target, it's 10. 15. Oh, thank hey. God. Um, it's, they're, not, they're not been particularly demanding checks most of today. They're really good at rolling threes. Um, so yeah, you managed to kind of like stick out your, your legs and your arms 
and ah! grab and grab the the rope that offsets the disadvantage of the vortex. So this is a straight up strength check, Lazam. Okay, here he comes. Oops. Seven. Oh, okay. oh, with strength uh, plus one, eight. I thought I'd you can one then. feel it <laughs> yeah. getting away from you. It's pulling on your short sword. It's getting more difficult to remain retain your own uh, grip. You're not able to move Aerotrix any further up the siphon, and a few feet of rope slip through your hands. You grab it, but you can feel the burn. Uh, Ralph. Ralph, help! <laughs> a similar thing to what the GM was about to say. <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, if, is there any way I could grab onto the rope? Probably not. Right? I'm not within reach. <laughs> As this happens, the 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 energy pulling at your aerotrix starts to its nature changes. You're still being dragged backwards, but it you can feel in addition the ground around you starting to shake. The walls of the siphon are beginning to ripple. Oh no! Uh, you can hear beneath you. Just, uh, it's a roar. So. Uh, kind of, uh, in, like, strange and otherworldly that it could almost be just a blare of white noise. Mm. Um. Oh. Uh, could. I mean, so are you further away from the thing? Yeah. So presumably it wouldn't be too difficult to get to the rope to help him pull just because it involves going in the direction that you're being pulled anyway or is that yeah I think I can get to Tom but whether I can brace myself against anything once I'm there oh, I've got okay. there is a spare sword in the um because I was hanging on with both swords I've got two short swords oh, yeah. as a rogue oh yeah as a, as, well, as a ranger I've also I've got pitons still so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the climbing <laughs> gear you have <laughs> <laughs> yeah that will help <laughs> I've just remembered I own pitons <laughs> I don't really know what a piton is. I just have it associated with climbing in some way. Isn't it the like the spike you jam into a? Yeah. Yeah. I think don't, in real climbing, don't they sort of go into pre-existing cracks? Uh, you can have little hammers, and you. you oh know, yeah, that's I do have a hammer. Oh, for goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have everything you need to solve this problem. <laughs> the also, got a crane. Is that in use? <laughs> <laughs> the truth was in your rucksack all along. Oh god. <laughs> Solution. Uh, Alright, I guess I'll use pittons to, to get towards you, Dom. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, you jam one of these things into the ground, kind of, uh, and holding on to it, swing around, and you're able to reach uh, Lazam's position relatively easily, because that's the direction the air wants you to go. Mm -hmm. So it'd help if you could help me haul up air tricks out of this situation. <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess from here I can grab onto your rope and help pull. Yeah, hopefully. Um, okay. I regret being so fat. <laughs> <laughs> it almost saved you all, but yeah. <laughs> um, it when you're a little fatter. <laughs> <laughs> if only I was more fat or less fat. <laughs> um, more fat or less brave. <laughs> when you get out of this, we're going to eat so many of your oranges. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask you to do a strength check with advantage. Me, Lazam, because you're helping him, right? Strength check with advantage coming right up. That's a straight 20. Oh, my God. Yay! So Ralph kind of, put, gets, uh, having shaken himself out of whatever panic he was in, that made he forget he owned climbing gear. Um, he, he re not repels, but kind of, well, yeah, let's say he repels. He jams his own uh, gear into the doorway using his sling as a kind of bit of makeshift climbing gear because you left your rope Why down not? there for no reason. <laughs> you kind of swing backwards using your wings to control the descent, like you're about to break and enter through the window of a high, high rise. <laughs> the old sling and wing. Yeah, the old sling and wing. You come down next to Lazam, grab one of those short swords, and the two of you wrap the rope around your arms, but Lazam, you have to lead the effort because your position is so secure and you're honestly stronger. And you pull, and you pull, and you pull, and Eretrix, you experience this as just sudden upward motion. Um, something is changing. The, the, the stonework around you is crumbling, revealing just the raw earth. Gap soils starting to pour through the gaps, uh, staining your beautiful feathers, uh, as the stone starts to collapse beneath you. Um, you hear a cry in the distance, deep below you, somewhere not only in the earth, but maybe in space as well. <laughs> and the cry is simply, Marsh's mother now! <laughs> <laughs> 
and you suddenly find yourself the the siphon force uh stops loses its pull on you and you sail upwards your battered wings kind of dragging against the stonework those streaks of light this way moving in the right direction and you burst out of the hole in front of your exhausted friends <laughs> however <laughs> It's the happiest you've been to burst through something today, and it's been a long day. <laughs> Yay! However, the ground is starting to shake. Oh, no. So are we in a position to get our footing and yeah, climb out of the... Uh, yes. That's <laughs> definitely what I'm going to do at this point. You sprint uh, out of the basement. Eretrix, you are feeling a little bit worse for wear, <laughs> battered by the impact with the siphon. Um as you reach uh, the upper floors, parts of the masonry are starting to give way. You can't see anybody else. Uh, the building has clearly already been fled. Oh, by the way, did you just leave Bunva down there? Yeah. Yes, okay. You left <laughs> yeah. Bunva down there. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> He's um, mostly stone anyway. He's with his check now. <laughs> Um, and you run out into the town square where the terrified surviving villagers of Greyhome are gathered. The barkeep runs out and says, what? What's happening? We're not sure exactly what we've achieved. <laughs> <laughs> we feel it may be progress. <laughs> and you're all fine. There's a kind of the earth itself ripples like something moving underneath it. Okay, we might want to leave yeah, <laughs> this maybe entire leave. place. <laughs> um, you, what, how do you express this? Run! Yeah, I'm just going to peg it for the exit. I'm just gonna, <laughs> for the nearest exit to the town. <laughs> Behind you, that ripple of earth uh, picks up Bundva's tower and drops it. And the orrery bends and the tower begins to sway and tip. Oh boy. But it's going away. It's falling away from you. It's okay. falling in the direction that you're not running in. You are fleeing through the streets surrounded by the surviving citizens of Greyholm. Reminder, we can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, could we carry him? I'm very heavy. Oh. Between yeah. the two of you, maybe. Huh. Yeah, it was like, what was it, 90 to 120 pounds? I don't know what a pound is, but that doesn't sound too much. Cool. <laughs> Give it a shot. Great. What are we checking for? Um, is it strength? Because... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, doing it a, 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 a strength with advantage for one last time, just for me. Three. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you, Minus one. So you each kind of have to like grab an arm of Lazam mm. and extend your wings. It's awkward to get space for both of you. You have to almost face each other mm. and beat down. This is something that maybe like Arakoka kids do for fun or like to tease <laughs> shit at people that can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you grab him and you take it to the air, easily moving ahead of the pack of surviving uh, a villain. Uh, villagers who run forwards you hear one of them shout they've just got him fucked up <laughs> <laughs> that's fair we'll come back probably no we won't <laughs> um, you take to the sky uh, you are suspended between the two of them your arms out it's kind of awkward this is horrible <laughs> you this really like hate everything about this yeah. <laughs> this is the worst thing that's ever happened and possibly the worst day of your life Absolutely. welcome to our cave experience <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you want to pass a wisdom check <laughs> um um, actually, that's only fair. <laughs> Roll a wisdom sort of take, throw. Uh, 19. 19. You actually, you, you hold it together. Yeah, just you're like, this has been the situation. Um, you, you're, you rise up above the, the rooftops of the city, uh, of the town. Uh, Bunva's tower has already collapsed behind you. And then the idle thumb just explodes from beneath <laughs> as a vast column of crystal, like a barb, shoots out and then pulls back in and withdraws. Guys, I'm not 100% sure we solved this. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, what's your direction? What's your... Douglas. Douglas. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, might be able to spot him somewhere down. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully he's running um, away from this madness. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, so you're, but you're leaving town. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like you, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope so. I start humming, I'm walking in the air. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Christmassy tune. <laughs> Um, it doesn't feel like the right place to be, <laughs> for sure. You um, you flap your way off this sort of gully between the two um, mountains. Beyond north, in what was the Goblin Marsh, 
the ground is uh, not moving. It's stable. Uh, people from the town are fleeing this way out of the northern gate down into the wilds. You can see the councillor Skane at the gate, still in her pyjamas, <laughs> waving people through the gate, shouting orders. A few of the remaining guards appear to be doing what she's saying. What would you like to do? Good work! <laughs> Continue fleeing, I guess. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Until we're safe enough... Oh, well, yeah. Until either we find Douglas or we're safe enough to land. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's an area where people are gathering, turning back to watch this mountainside apparently crumble. <laughs> uh, refugees kind of gathered, people still fleeing out of the city, a few staying behind, a few heroic people staying behind <laughs> to make sure as many people as possible get to the exit. As you flap away as conspicuously as it is possible to flap away. <laughs> Look, I tried being brave. <laughs> In our defence, we did solve the mystery of the check. <laughs> that chicken we, murder is totally solved. We may have solved the larger problem. <laughs> As you're all kind of like hanging there in the air going, <laughs> um, there's a final deafening eruption, a shower of earth. As Greyholm explodes from beneath. <laughs> um, yeah, we fucked it. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Greyholm. A creature, uh, a vast, reptilian, crystalline, winged thing emerges, pulls itself out of the earth. You're watching, it's like an egg hatching, but the earth, the mountainside is the egg. And this creature is the newborn. It has the appearance, the profile of a dragon, a vast crystalline thing, but made of coruscating crystalline scales. Uh, everything about it is kind of beautiful and terrible. And it pulls itself free of the earth and places two claws down the cliffside and just bellows. <laughs> it bellows. <laughs> it's underwhelming, <laughs> but deafening. Uh, mm. uh, I think that's too big a problem for me, a deep gnome, <laughs> to solve from this position. <laughs> yeah. Suspended between like, bird people. Yeah, we've done all we can. <laughs> we've done something. Um, <laughs> so, uh, are you still in the air? Yeah, we're yeah. still in the air. Yeah. Okay. Um, you see um, below you uh, one of the villagers fleeing down the hillside, got halfway down the hillside and just froze. Halfway down. Mm. Stopped, turned ashen grey. And the dragon creature, crystal marsh, goblin thing, kind of kneels down, puts his head over the edge of the ruined city and goes, Aah! again, and then that person just keeps running. Like nothing happened. It keeps running down the hillside. Cool. What would you like <laughs> to do? Maybe the goblin dragon is a good thing? <laughs> <laughs> have we heard the dro goblin dragon side of things? <laughs> we haven't. Uh, we, I think broadly we've saved at least one life. <laughs> Uh, a, a sort of a bumble running across the plains. Mm. Uh, Lazan, you see Douglas. Yeah. yeah. Making his way back to the only home he knows. His no! birthplace. <laughs> he looks so a bit kind of confused, but he comes to a halt near that crowd. Okay. We need him to hear Goblin Marsh's song so he doesn't die, well, right? Well, it's Is fair he... to say you've all heard the song. It's oh, very, very then. loud. <laughs> We're fine then, right? No? Cool. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be no consequences of this. It seems like a safe enough dragon. <laughs> I mean, what would you like to do? I you could about... fly up to it and I can try and talk with it uh, in goblin tongue, see if Marsh is still in there. And, oh, yeah. And, and I could just dangle in front of him. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm willing to try it. <laughs> float me closer. <laughs> yeah, shall we just float you into his eye line? Yeah, let's... Uh, let's I don't want to... Let's you, ask him. It's, mm. This beast is impossibly big no um and which is you know that's just a thing um <laughs> you you draw closer to it and you're suspended between the two aracocra and but there's a kind of a, a, a glint in its green eyes 
Um, what would you like to say? <laughs> Play the music, Tom. <laughs> uh, I'd like to say, we come in peace. Uh, is that you, Marsh? <laughs> is it Chris Marsh <laughs> I'm talking to now? I you hear the rumble almost in your mind. Oh, no. I am Chris Marsh and Bone Mama. Well, I'm glad we've brought your story to a resolution <laughs> <laughs> you're weirdo <laughs> uh, is there any way you can undo the curse uh, that the bone mother put all are safe in the beneficence of bone marsh cool <laughs> <laughs> he sort of extends his wings and the silhouette the shadow he forms looks not dissimilar to the cave art the, the daubings on the wall the great winged creature over the huddled crowd uh, it seems to me like your work here is done. Uh, would yeah. you kindly leave? That's a persuasion <laughs> check. Here it comes. That's a one. <laughs> no, it's a seven. Oh, it's a seven. seven. Oh, that'd be quite similar. Uh, what's you? you yeah, oh. wisdom to that. Um, wisdom is zero. Uh, so yeah, seven. So <laughs> straight seven. He goes. It's my mountain. Uh, yeah, he's right. <laughs> you leave. It's okay. a fair point. <laughs> he's got his bags right well, there. Well, I mean. Are we cool? We cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm good with that, guys. Yeah. If you are, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's fly off. Yeah, yeah All right. I think that's. Yeah. I'll I'll play silent night for him as we speed away. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> he starts to gyrate on the top of the, <laughs> like whatever parts of the, the village were still standing, <laughs> uh, completely annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that danceable a tune. <laughs> He's not like he's not getting down, but like there's an element of like cool, um, and he rises up above. Where are you going? <laughs> I should away, ask. Yeah. which direction? Yeah. Away. Into the sunset, if there is one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Basically, yeah. Off. Uh, we, no, we should we should stop by Douglas so you have a steed and we can. That would be nice. Yeah, mm. I, I don't want to be up here anymore. Thank. We're quite tired as well. <laughs> so you you land well heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and I say that as someone who is well heavy, <laughs> surprisingly dense for my size, and uh, you know. <laughs> You land next to Douglas at the edge of the crowd, the shell-shocked crowd of survivors. <laughs> mm. um, among them, the councillor, <coughs> the barkeep. You don't see a lot of the people you've seen earlier. <laughs> um, there's a few guards, people. They just look at you, and they, they don't know what to say. They haven't. They don't. They just stare up at the the creature that in the ruins of their town. You're welcome. <laughs> I approach Douglas and uh, greet him as an old friend. He just looks at you like... Oh. <laughs> I attempt to get on Douglas's back. That's fine. Um, and then I uh, I take off my hat and I slap his flank uh, in an attempt to make him rear up in a kind of badass way that would impress the crowd. <laughs> um, let's do a performance check. <laughs> 20. Oh really? God, you yes. just rolled a natural 20 onto yes. the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Douglas... <laughs> <laughs> rears up on his tiny poor kind well big for a pig but small relative to his body mm. hind legs and goes <laughs> like a, a sort of whinnies <laughs> whinny <laughs> winks winks he I, winks I shout greetings friends what's more we have saved the day <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your lives as I bid thee farewell and then, <laughs> then I ride off I bury my beak in my wing <laughs> <laughs> Marsh thing leans down over the mountain and scream sings full blast over the faces of the surviving crowd and then draws back braces his head to the sky and goes thanks for letting everyone <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to our nonsense. I hope you enjoyed it. This brings uh, CNC D&D to a close. We'll be back in the new year with our regular slate of pods from PC games to miniatures to pyro to bloodborne. So have a very Merry Christmas and happy new year. And once again, huge thanks to music hero, Mike Debenham for the soundtrack to this series based as ever on Clambake by the Mandibles. 
I had a daydream about getting a fantasy version of our regular theme tune for CNC D and D, but had no idea who to ask. And then one day Mike showed up in our inbox with exactly that. His is the true music that makes the goblin do a dance. And, and that is a compliment if that wasn't clear. Anyway, good night, everybody. I've been Chris Thurston. They have been Tom Francis, Philip Warren, Tom Senior. And this was CNC D and D. Mm-hmm.